there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have a box of wine in front of me, a box, uh, to be specific, of uh, Blandis Madeiras, because uh, there are four little bottles in here, and uh, I've been sent them uh, because I'm supposed to say these, these are the perfect wines. A little bit of bump in there, Madeira for dad. Madeira for mum, Madeira for everybody, I love Madeira. Uh, but the idea is that there's um, four little bottles in here, uh, which I, I will struggle to get out, um, and uh, representing the four noble grapes uh, that are produced in, uh, in uh, the Madeira is produced from. There are, the, the main grape on the island of Madeira is one called Tinta Negra Mole, and if you do, if you make the wine really, really well, uh, it can be as good as anything that's, that's produced there. But um, uh, the, traditionally, I suppose, the top end Madeiras have been produced from uh, these four grape varieties. And um, so I've got Cercial, uh, Vadello, Boal, and Malmsey. And um, that is in ascending order of richness. So this is the drier end, this is the sweeter end. Um, in, it's, it's strange with Madeira. They don't measure. Uh, most places in the world measure their um, their wines, um, their, the sweetness levels in residual sugar. In in Madeira, they say, oh, we, we've got to put it in Bome. Uh, so uh, the Cercial is 0.5 Bome to 1.5, which trans one Bome is about 18 grams of sugar. So nine to 27 grams of sugar. Uh, next one, 27 to 45, something like that. Um, so one and a half to two and a half Bome. Next one, two and a half to three and a half Bome, which translates as 45 to 63. And uh, final one, 63, 3.5 Bome, up to 6.5 Bome, um, which is 117. Um, that's for, for all you statistical bores there. Never mind that. Let's get on to the wines. Actually, why, why do they do them? Um, uh, why are these wines in different levels of sweetness? After all, these are just great varieties. Why don't they just make them um, uh, all to the same sweetness levels and, and then have different styles of wine? No idea. Uh, but traditionally, the Cercial has been produced in the coolest vineyards. The Malmsey has produced, been produced in the warmest vineyards. No reason you shouldn't be able to do a dry wine in these vineyards. Uh, the Malmsey vineyards or a sweet wine in the Cercial vineyards. Enough waffle. Let's get on to um, the Cercial. Uh, so these, these are all, um, it says 10 years old. Then they were in 2018 here. These are not um, uh, 2008 vintage. They have been, they're wines that have been blended to taste like they're on average 10 years old. So... Um, so yeah, these these four little twenty centiliter bottles, uh, all of them nineteen percent alcohol. Yeah, all of them nineteen percent alcohol. So let's give the Cercial a whirl. Ah, oh, what I love about Madeira um, is it's got this. I, there are some things that I taste, and they almost make my scalp itch. Um, and it's a, it, it feels like this is going to be one of those scalp itching wines. Uh, I get it with some uh, dry Orosos as well. Um, so that, that edge of fortified wine where there is quite a bit of um, uh, a healthy amount of alcohol, uh, but this slightly searing acidity, which by itself uh, can be a little bit uh, too aggressive. But then you have it with some salty salty food and some, some like uh, salted almonds and stuff like that and it tastes lovely um but it's not that there's that there's the christmas cake edge and um but there is this uh almost like a dried citrus peel restraint it smells like it's going to be uh not heady but um intelligently complex there's a richness and there's a juiciness and there's a, a pungent edge um, nice nutty character, sweeter than some Cercials um, I've, I've, I've come across. It's quite a range from 0.5 Bome, 9 grams of sugar, to 1.5 Bome, 27 grams of sugar. So three times the amount of sugar is possible in the sweetest versions of Cercial to, to the driest. Not sure what they've got here, but what it has got is it's got that, um, uh, despite that edge of sweetness that is there, there is always this fresh, vibrant, zesty, um, yeah, pointy acidity that, that keeps everything fresh, keeps everything moving, and um, yeah, keeps your mouth entertained. Uh, the sort of thing, yeah, upmarket crisps, bought the, grab a big bag of those and, uh, 
uh, give them to your dad or your mum or your whoever or your sister or your wife or your husband or your significant other and I think they'd have a rather good time with that. Okay, let's put the little cat back on on there. I will revisit that one later on. Uh, in the meantime, I'll try the Vodello. So I don't, you can probably see from the colour, I don't know what it's like against my British Racing Green top, but um, uh, it's, it's a deeper, uh, darker colour. Some of the Cerciels I've, I've come across have been quite a bit paler than that one. That, one, that, one, that I think is going to be pale, the palest of the quartet. Here, a bit darker in colour, uh, a bit more richer, raisiny, more fruit cakey, but still with this pungent freshness. And there is this edge of um, ever so slight, um, oh, what's it called, embrocation, band, uh, yeah, the, the edge of bandages, not the Britannomyces edge of bandages, but just something uh, of that uh, uh, Jay's fluid in a good way. And uh, I don't know if I'm selling this to you, but it's, there's toffees, there's nuts, there's a bit of caramel in there. And I think those characteristics are going to mount as we get through the range, but uh, it smells enticing. That's lovely. That's just, um, it's lovely, gentle, juicy, uh, persistent. There's a richness there, but there's still this uh, freshness. Starting to get into these, yeah, I, I mentioned caramel there. There is this touch of, um, touch more sweetness. It's less, um, it, it's more confident sweetness, if that makes sense, than in the Cerciel. The Cerciel almost felt like it wanted to be a drier wine, but it made, uh, uh, a, a little bit sweeter here it's very happy to flaunt its sweetness because it's got everything else in balance uh, there is this lovely richness there's a power but there's still all that always that pungent juicy acidity to uh, to keep it driving and uh, keep you coming back for more yum so um Cercial good Vidello very good what about the Boal Let's give this one a whirl. So I'm expecting something a little bit darker. Oh, no, not too much difference in colour from uh, um, from the from the Vidello. What about? Let's have a sniff. Well, interesting this because uh, it seems to be as pungent and uh, it almost seems like a, a lighter colour. Um, maybe I should should pour a little bit of the Vidello out uh, to, to compare it, but maybe this has got a little bit more brownness to it. But it's not it's not hugely deep in colour, um, but what it does have is, um, it seems to be, I, I don't know whether they, it, they're both saying they're 10 years old, this seems to be a little bit older and knowing it's picked up some of those characteristics that you get with, um, uh, with uh, long ageing, so it's got a little bit more of the nutty, slightly old-fashioned furniture, you go into old furniture shops and you get that mahogany furniture edge. Um, and uh, still the nuts, still those uh, Christmas cake uh, characteristics, and it smells smells even better than the uh, than the Vidello did. Lovely balance there. There's just this. It, yes, there is a little bit more um, syrup is the wrong word, but there is a little bit more unctuous sweetness there. But in beautiful balance with the flavours. Uh, this again, this zesty citrus peel acidity. There's the walnuts, there's the furniture, there's the, um, um, there's the complete tuck shop. Well, I'm going to have another monster of it. Might not spit this bit out. Yum, yum, yum. Um, just lovely, complete, confident wine. And um, people say, oh, I don't like fortified wines. They're almost too much. That is a sort of wine to serve. Um, and you can serve it slightly chilled. There's no tannins or anything there that... Uh, need to sort themselves out. It's not going to be diminished by serving um, uh, serving slightly chilled. Don't over chill it because you'd miss out on those lovely uh, lovely fragrant edges that are coming through. And you're now, as, as, it, as it's opening up, you're getting these uh, things like this this coffee, this little, little bits of chocolate, um, even a little bit of uh, fresh tobacco coming through there and really hangs around. Let's see whether the Malmsey can beat that because that's delicious. Again, not massively deep in colour, 
Um, there are some Madeiras that uh, I think, uh, uh, especially at this uh, richer end, that received their colour, maybe not from the grapes that were there, just the grapes that were there in the first place. I think they have uh, some artificial enhancements, but here um, you're getting uh, extra sweetness, extra richness. It's, it's as if someone's dissolved uh, some treacle toffee in there. Uh, yeah, like the previous one with a little bit more treacle toffee. So you're getting that uh, edge of the, uh, the the wood furniture. You're getting those those Christmas cake edges, but more toffied, um, and uh, maybe even a touch of barley sugar in there. A lovely, rich, rounded, heady, um, and yeah, it, it, there's um, it's not propped up. I was talking about the colour. It's not propped up by. Uh, caramel or anything like that. Um, it also feels, it's, it's, it says it's a 10 year old wine, as I was saying with the previous one, it feels like there's a little bit more age and more knowledge about that wine than the 10 years old would uh, uh, would, would indicate. Uh, there's this lovely seam of freshness and I hesitate, hes I hesitate to use the word minerality uh, but there's something there that seems to have been drawn up out of the soil. Um, and there's a pungency, still the pungency that's been running through running through the range. This freshness of this zesty citrus acidity, especially on that citrus peel edge. Uh, but it's, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Um, and uh, lovely balance, lovely complete wine. I look at a range like this and uh, I think that I could... Uh, I could probably drink them throughout a meal and start with the the Cercial. Um Actually, I'd, I'd probably go for maybe the Boile. Uh, sorry, the the Vidello as a uh, a, a muse bouche. Uh, then have the Cercial with a, a, a light first course and uh, then move on to um, uh, the Boile. I think I, I've I've had some uh, wines like this with um, steak in slightly sweet fruity sauces and they go beautifully. And then finish off with the Malmsey and some some uh, uh, some good cheddar or some uh, one of those old hard cheeses, old old Gouda, old cheddar, old Parmesan, and uh, you happily drink Madeira all the way through the course of the meal. But um, I, to be honest, I'd happily drink good Madeira uh, with with most meals. But um, I'm prejudiced. But uh, hopefully that hasn't come across here. But um, anyway, if you've got any fathers or Oh, I don't know how many fathers you've got, but if you've got any significant people in your life who deserve this little four-pack, it's, um, it's a really nice present for them. And um, um, the wines are lovely. See you soon.